Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation from Mathematics as Problem Solving by Alexander Seufer. Alexander Seufer is a great mathematician who authored a number of books and he also, along with other mathematicians, organized the Colorado Mathematical Olympiad, now known as Seufer Mathematical Olympiad. So I'm going to be sharing some links down below for you to check. So let's get started. So we have this problem x to the power x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 1 and we're going to be looking for values of x. So when you have an exponential equation one of the things you look at is if you have the same base. So if I have something like 2 to the power x equals 4 then I can basically write this as 2 to the power x equals 2 to the second and from here I can just conclude that x equals 2. But that problem is so standard and this one is actually more fun to solve. Why? Because the exponent is a variable, the base is a variable, and the result is 1. So we have some special cases here. What are those? So if you have something like this, a to the power b equals 1, then we're going to be considering a number of cases. For example, if a is equal to 1, then b can be anything, right? We don't really care about it because 1 raised to any power is always going to be 1. Now another scenario that you could be getting is where a equals negative 1. Because as you know, if you square negative 1, for example, you get a positive 1. If you raise it to the third power, you get a negative 1. But if you raise it to the fourth power, you get positive 1 again. So you're looking at an even power here. So if a is negative 1 and b is even, of course it has to be an even integer, then you also get a solution from here. And the last case you're gonna we're going to be looking at is b is equal to 0 and a is not equal to 0 because we don't want to get into a situation where we have 0 to the power 0. Okay, so we're going to be looking at each of these cases separately and see if we can get solutions from here. So the first one, we're going to be looking at the base being 1. So I have x to the power x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 1 and what happens if x is equal to 1? Then I get a valid solution. So x equals 1 is a valid solution. Good. That's my first case. Let's look at the second case. What happens if a is negative 1? In other words, what if x is negative 1? Okay. Now in this case, I kind of have to figure out because what I need is x squared minus 5x plus 6 needs to be even. But is that satisfied? Let's take a look. Well, here's one thing to keep in mind. If x is even, x squared is even, 5x is even, their difference is also even. So this is going to give us an even sum. What if x is odd? If x is odd, x squared is also odd. 5x is also odd. Odd minus odd is going to be even. Plus 6 is also going to be even. So this result, x squared minus 5x plus 6, is always going to be even regardless of the value of x. But let's still check that. So let's go ahead and replace x with negative 1 here and let's see what happens. If I replace x with negative 1, I'm getting negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 plus 6. This gives me 1 plus 5 plus 6, and that's equal to 12. And as you know, 12 is even. So x equals negative 1 is a valid solution as well. So we got two solutions so far. We're going to be looking at the third one. The third one involves the exponent being 0. So what does that gi give us? Let's see. So I want x squared minus 5x plus 6 to be 0 and I don't want x to be 0. Is that possible? Let's take a look. Well, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is factorable. As you know, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5 and those numbers are negative, through, negative 3 and negative 2. So you can write this as x minus 3 times x minus 2 as a product equals 0 and you don't want x to be 0. Great. So from here using the zero product property I can safely say that if x minus 3 is equal to 0 then x is equal to 3. If x minus 2 is equal to 0 then x is equal to 2. And notice that none of these values are equal to 0 therefore they are valid solutions as well. Right? because they don't make the base 0, so they are good. So x equals 0, 3 is a possible solution, x equals 2 is also a possible solution. Let's go ahead and put it all together. So I got as my solution set so far 
four solutions, right? I got the negative one, I got the positive one, I got the two, and I got the three. So these are all the solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.